Hello and welcome to my Rhino Blocks tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be covering how to make blocks, how to use them, why we should use them, the difference between blocks and groups, um, and sort of the benefits of them. They're quite simple, um, but they can be very beneficial, especially when um, working on things that are very repetitive throughout a project um, and things that are that you know that will be changing quite a bit. So in this example, we have our sort of default um, house here to work along. And I'm going to kind of zoom in to these three big windows right here as an example of how to do this. Uh, if I look at these, I have a window frame created. Uh, I also have a piece of glass in here. Um, so nothing too fancy. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these two on the left. So I'm going to select this, delete, select, delete and I will uh, focus on one here. So if I wanted to have this be something that's standardized and it's copied around my project um, as a block, the way I do that is I select my glass, I hold shift and select the frame. Um, holding shift allows you to select two things at the same time um, and sort of the opposite of that is if you hold control, it'll de deselect one thing at a time. So if I hold shift select that, if I deselect the frame, now just the glass is selected. Hold shift to bring the frame back. Um, so I have both of these. I'm just going to type in the command block. And as soon as I do that, you can see the command line is asking me to put pick a base point. Um, it doesn't matter where you do it. I typically like to do the bottom right hand corner of whatever I'm working on. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to name this block big window. Um, it's, the name isn't necessarily that important as long as you can remember it. Click OK. And now it's a block. Um, how do I know it's a block? When I click on it, both objects are selected, no matter if I click the frame or the glass. It, um, and they are both highlighted. Now if I take that and I copy it over, so I'll hit C for copy as my shortcut. It's going to select on the bottom right here, and I will copy it right to the left side of it and copy it again. Um, now I have copies of blocks, and if I want to edit these, it's important to know that it doesn't matter which one I edit, all of them will change. So if I go back, so let's say I go to this third one that I copied and I decided that I want this window to actually be a foot shorter. So if I double click on this, you can see the entire model grays out. I can't select anything out here. All I can do is work on the block itself. Um, I'll escape out of that and I can hit um, X to X out of it. And I didn't make any changes. I can also type block edit. And then it'll ask me to select the block and I'll select on here. It gets me to the same place as just double clicking on it. And now that I'm in it, what I want to do is edit this block to be uh, a foot shorter. So um, this is a good time to cover a good surf solid editing tool, um, which is move points. So move points for solids work sort of like moving points for um, a 2D object. Um, but it, it's a good way to transform something without manipulating it. So for example, this window frame, you can see it has a fair amount of detail on it. Um, and if I were, wanted that a foot shorter, I wouldn't want to just scale it 1D because it would shrink the top and bottom but not shrink, shrink the sides, therefore deforming the frame. What I want to do is almost, you know, move the miter cut here down a foot. So the best way to do that is if I select the poly surface um, and I go to turn on solid control points, which is this little icon here. Um, it's also, if you go to your solid tools tab, it's up here. Um, and I believe the command for it is solid point on, but this is one of those uh, commands that I typically just jump to my icon um, just because it's an easy place to remember. And once I do that, you can see that all of these little points that sort of make up the geometry of my window frame turn on. If I look at this in a wireframe, you can really see that I have the whole 
um, geometry um, as an option there. So what I want to do is just select only my top points. So the best way to do that is a left select. And this is a good time to talk about the difference between a right and a left select. So if I select and make a window from left to right, you can see it only selects uh, my points. If I make a window and select this from right to left, you can see what happens is it selects the whole window frame and the glass. And the reason for that is because selecting right to the left will select everything that's within the box. Selecting left to right will only select the items that are 100% in the box. So the window frame and the glass isn't 100% in the box, but the points are. So it's a nice, easy way. And I'm going to hold Shift and select my other points. And now that I have them, I'm just going to type M for move. And I'm going to grab my points here. And um, I'm just going to, I can hover in the down direction. Um, and you can see it's saying near, which means it's, it's following that line. Once it says that, I can just hit tab and it locks that in. And now it can only go up or down. And from here, I'll just type in 12 for 12 inches and click enter. And now I've reduced my window by 12 inches. I'll click out. And if I go back to my um, shaded view, you can see my window frame shorter, but my glass is not. Um, so I'm going to use a different command to edit this glass. And what I'm going to use, rather than turning my points on, because this geometry is so nice and simple, it's basically just a thin rectangle, I'm going to use the move face command. So move face is um, down here. It's this little icon, move face. This is something I use so frequently that I have MF as my shortcut. Um, it's a good idea to set that up. And it'll just ask you to select the face. And once you have it, press enter. And now I'll click on my starting point. And again, I know that I want to, I don't want to bend this glass. I just want it to be, go down. So once I'm hovering here and it says near, I'll just hit tab. And I can come down here. And I know that no matter what, my window will stay in frame. But now I can just snap to some other part of my frame that I know. So I'll snap to um, the bottom side there. Oops, maybe I went a little too far. Frame. Maybe I'll just kind of hover in here, or I'll snap to a different piece here. And now my glass has been brought down as well. When I click OK, you can see that not only did this update, but the other two is up updated as well. So this is a way to um, update lots of objects um, all at once. Another interesting but often overlooked way to use blocks is even moving them in position. So for example, if I double click on this box, let's say all my windows, I wanted to be actually one inch closer into um, the, the threshold here or one inch you know, further towards flush with the out exterior wall. I can select both objects and I'll move them, we'll say two inches, so I'll just type two, and I'll lock in this direction. So now that I've moved it, you can see this the shaded old one is there. I'll click OK. The other ones move as well. So often I find that I'll have a, a whole facade of windows, and I have them in the wrong plane, and I actually want to recess them maybe two inches. So rather than select every single window and move them back, if I have them as a block, I can just move the block itself because everything is relative to that one base point. Um, so that's um, the sort of gist of how blocks work. Um, again, no matter where, how many copies I make this, they will always update. It doesn't really matter which one was the parent block. Um, and so that's different than a group. So a group is more of a way to select multiple objects um, at the same time. And so something like these stairs, for example, where each one is an individual piece of metal. Um, but I know that whenever I'm editing these that I'll likely be editing them all at once. So if I wanted to make them slightly more narrow, I wouldn't make one stair more narrow. Um, if I wanted to copy them to another side, I'd likely take them all. So this is sort of a good example where I'll select, I'll hold shift, I'll select them all. And then I can just type in group. Um, my shortcut is actually G. 
But if I type in group, oh, sorry, I missed one there. Then they become a group, and now, similar to a block, when I select it, they all select, but it doesn't really have any effect on editing them. It's really just a fast selection tool. So now if I want to um, make these more narrow, I can just select them all at once, and I'll do a scale 1D from my right to my left, and let's say they're all six inches. Oops. Um, um, just a few inches more narrow, I can select them all at once and they all got more narrow together. Control Z to undo that. And um, again, that's really the basics of, of blocks and their relationship to or and why they differ from points. Um, it's a good tool for things that are fluctuating, um, but also are very repetitive. Um, and I think that'll be it for today. Thanks.